I want to provide a brief overview of some of the different exchange rate systems. Now, these are going to be classified according to the degree of government control. You can have a fixed exchange rate system, you can have a freely floating one, managed float, or pegged. So let's take a look at um, each one of these in a little more detail. Um, in a fixed exchange rate system, exchange rates are held constant or allowed to fluctuate only within very narrow boundaries. So for example, suppose we set the uh, exchange rate or we fix the dollar exchange rate at a dollar twenty-five per euro. Now you're trying to maintain that dollar twenty-five. Now does that mean that it can't ever change? Well no, the central bank can reset a fixed exchange rate by devaluing or reducing the value of the currency against other currencies. So for example, uh, the central bank could change the value of the dollar euro relationship. So perhaps it's a dollar fifteen for a euro. So they can change the value of these things. Now we should be careful about terminology. Sometimes you've heard about depreciation and we're talking about devalue, devaluation. Now in depreciation, that's where the market causes the exchange rate to change. In devaluing a currency, you're talking about a central bank saying, we're going to set this rate at a different number. Um, if the central bank can devalue currency, it can also revalue currency and increase the value of the currency against other currencies. So the, ex the fixed exchange rate system um, that we have used in the past comes from the Bretton Woods Agreement um, and lasted from 44 to 71, although it wasn't fully implemented until 1958. Uh, the name of the agreement comes from the place where the conference was held, which was Bretton Woods, New Hampshire. In this case, each currency was valued in terms of gold. Countries settled international balances in dollars, and U.S. dollars were convertible to gold at a fixed exchange rate of $35 an ounce. Uh, the Bretton Woods system was in place until persistent U.S. balance of payments deficits led to foreign-held dollars exceeding the U.S. gold stock. Let's think about what that means. Remember that the dollars are convertible into gold, and if foreigners hold more dollars than the amount of gold the U.S. has, then the U.S. is not going to be able to fulfill its obligation to redeem dollars for gold at this official price. So in order to adjust for this, there was a Smithsonian Agreement and that called for a devaluation of the U.S. dollar by about 8% against other currencies. So I think the value of uh, gold went for, or the exchange rate went from, you know, uh, $35 an ounce to $38 an ounce, but that still wasn't enough. So eventually that was, the whole system was disbanded. What are some of the advantages of fixed exchange rate system? Well, what it does is it insulates a country from the risk of currency appreciation. Okay, if, you're, if currency appreciates, if the U.S. currency appreciates, for example, that's going to be a problem for perhaps for businesses in the U.S., if we happen to be talking about the U.S., because it's going to be cheaper for U.S. residents to buy foreign goods, that is, importing things, it's going to be more expensive for foreigners to buy U.S. goods. So you're going to start running a trade deficit. Um, it allows firms to engage in direct foreign investment without currency risk. Again, when a, co a company invests in another country, there's always the concern about how much they're going to receive when they convert, for example, their euros back to dollars. A fixed rate system gets rid of that problem. Uh, what are some of the disadvantages? Well, there's always a risk that the government will alter the value of the currency. They can, you know, depreciate, uh, devalue their currency or revalue their currency. And 
countries, uh, country and, and multinational corporations may be more vulnerable to economic conditions in other countries. So when you're in a fixed rate system, other economies are essentially tied into yours or yours are tied into theirs. The opposite of the fixed rate system is the freely floating exchange rate system. This is a case where the government doesn't really intervene Exchange rates are determined by market forces, and so supply and demand determines what the exchange rate is. Advantages of a freely floating system, country is more insulated from inflation of other countries. The country is more insulated from unemployment of other countries. It does not require the central bank to maintain exchange rates within some specified boundaries. What are some of the disadvantages? Um, it can adversely affect a country that has high unemployment. It can adversely affect a country with high inflation because what's going to happen is their exchange rate is going to change significantly. Here are a few countries that use a floating exchange rate system. Argentina with their peso, uh, Brazil with their real, Russia with the ruble, uh, Sweden with the krona. Um, the United Kingdom with the pound, uh, the United States with the dollar. Now you can have a system that's a floating system but doesn't float totally and we refer to this as a managed float exchange rate system. Governments sometimes intervene to prevent their currencies from moving too far in a certain direction. So they allow them to float but they intervene if they feel they've moved too much. Um, countries with floating exchange rate systems, currencies of most large developed countries are allowed to float, although they may be periodically managed by their respective central banks. So the Fed may jump in if they feel the, the dollar has gotten too weak or too strong. Um, criticisms of the system, managed float allows a government to manipulate exchange rates to benefit its own country at the expense of others. Pegged exchange rate system. Here the home currency value is pegged to one foreign currency or to an index of currencies. What are the advantages and disadvantages? Well, it may attract foreign investment because the exchange rate is expected to remain stable. Um, Weak economic or political conditions can cause firms and investors to question whether the peg will be broken. Are they going to maintain that same um, exchange rate? Currency board. Okay, a currency board issues into circulation local notes and coins that are anchored to a foreign currency or commodity referred to as the reserve currency. And the anchor currency is usually a, a strong internationally traded currency like the dollar, the euro, or the British pound. And the value and stability of the local currency is directly linked to the value and stability of the foreign anchor currency. Um, the assets of currencies bo currency boards anchor currency reserves which correspond at a minimum to 100% of all local notes and coins in circulation are typically either low interest bearing bonds and or other types of security. So what I mean by that? I mean that the currency board has to have um, reserves that are at least 100% of all local notes and coins in circulation because they stand ready to exchange that for um, for their currency. So if they don't have enough reserves, they obviously can't do that. So it's got to be at least 100%, sometimes more than that. Um, in some ways, this acts a little bit like a central bank, but there are some differences. Central banks create money. Central banks act as lenders of last resort. That is not the case of currency board. Um, interest rates of pegged currencies. The interest rate will move in tandem with the interest rate of the currency to which it's tied. So you can see that, you know, if you peg your currency to another country's currency, then essentially you're going to move in lockstep with them. 
There are a few countries uh, that peg their currency. Uh, the Bahamas, uh, their local currency is, is called the dollar, and they peg to the U.S. dollar. Bermuda, same thing. Brunel, uh, they call theirs the dollar as well, but they peg to the Singapore dollar. Bulgaria, the lev, is, um, is pegged to the euro. Um, Hong Kong, its dollar is pegged to the U.S. dollar. So there's some other countries, but here are just a few. And finally, let me mention something referred to as dollarization. This is the replacement of a foreign currency with U.S. dollars. And this process is a step beyond currency board or pegging your currency because it forces the local currency to be replaced by the U.S. dollar. And although dollarization and currency board both attempt to peg the local currency's value, the currency board does not replace the local currency with dollars. You know, once, once you replace your local currency with, for example, U.S. dollars, then it's very hard to reverse that. You know, if you have a pegged currency, you can change what the, uh, the pegged rate is, but, you know, once you've converted and decided we're going to use U.S. dollars in our economy, it's very hard to go back. So here are a couple of countries that uh, use the dollar as their currency. Panama, Ecuador, Cambodia, and Zimbabwe. So you can see that they're there are different exchange rate regimes. These all have implications for trade, foreign investment, and um, other international um, operations.